Doug 4J was a beast. When that hit last year, like it was all over the news. And like a lot of other vulnerabilities, like it got a lot of airtime. Companies were freaking out. You couldn't. The, the, the scary part was, and I actually reached out to a colleague um, who worked at a company that I was at before, who works there now, and it was like, I can't talk right now because we cannot figure this where this thing is at. And I thought that was an interesting way to lead in, scary way, but an interesting way to lead into talking yeah. with you today because Cisco has been so known for you know, network type observability yeah, for so long. Exactly. But that's not all we do. We haven't just only done that for a very, it's been a while. Yeah. We've been doing things like this for a while, but things like this being application observability and security, how are we even approaching that? You know, these are great points and you're absolutely right. Uh, Log4j was a, a complete beast. It took the entire world by storm because it was so pervasively deployed and the vulnerability was so easy to exploit and there's so many variations on it and people just kept hearing about it on the news and then they'd come in and they'd have no idea where it was deployed in their environments because it's one of these pieces of code that you just cobble together these uh, open source components into so many different permutations to make your business applications and they're the world is developing them by millions a year. We have actually projections of 750 million new apps in a four year window by IDC. That rate of application development is really uh, makes it difficult to keep track of each software component. So people were just like at a loss, like how do we even find this, much less than take steps to remediate and protect ourselves from it. And so yeah, to your second point, yeah, Cisco is then extending its security muscles into new areas and this makes a lot of sense. We've been the leader in networking and security for decades, so now we can apply all that thought leadership to the realm of cloud native and that's exactly what we're doing. I really appreciate hearing that. Um, I was meeting with some folks earlier this week from our security group, mm -hmm. and you and I were talking about this ahead yeah. of time, and one of the comments they, they made and we all we had a talk about is, there's just so much data. And yeah. in the general term of security, we'll get back to application specific security yeah. in a moment, but in the general concept of security, oftentimes everyone thinks that having more of this information, like yeah, more data, the better. The problem is it can actually be an issue for you if you don't oh, have yeah. all the context around it and know what to do with it, you can get overloaded. So how are you seeing Cisco and how are we applying those concepts to application security? Yeah, that's another great question and I completely agree. You can detect all sorts of vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities with your code, vulnerabilities with your API, vulnerabilities with your infrastructure and configurations, vulnerabilities with your, your roles and your privileges with in your cloud provider, so many dimensions of vulnerabilities and you just have a, a listing of these, you're just going to be overwhelmed. You have no idea where to start as a DevOps or a SecOps uh, persona. Mm -hmm. However, what was re what's really cool in our latest release of uh, what we're building with Panoptica, and it's based on Lightspin Technology, a company we recently acquired from Israel, is that one of their leading advantages is to present all this in an attack path, where you have a list of all the attacks based on the vulnerabilities, the most likely, as well as then the most uh, serious that could, that could wreak the most havoc in your environment and then contextually connect all these points because all of these vulnerabilities, all these exploits are then in a graph DB which makes correlation and, and uh, querying of them very fast and efficient and then when you see a single narrative you say, hey, this is the attack path that can affect my infrastructure, can affect my privileges, can affect ultimately my crown jewels and you see that laid out for you, then you know where to start and that's what we've seen the customers that are using this technology just saying, yeah, I just started with these and then I'm like covering my bases so fast and so very efficiently and that's, it's, it's a huge uh, protection for them. You the used, contextual correlation. Right, you used the, that context word that I've heard pop yeah. up a number of times and I'm really, I really appreciate that that's, you know, correlation has been something we've talked about yeah. in, in all these technology fields for a long time. Yeah. And yes, that's a good thing, we need to still do that, but just like when you, I, I said I used this kind of analogy before, um, when you are having a conversation with a person, or if you hear from somebody and they say a, a statement, if you don't have the context yeah. around what they said, sometimes that statement might sound really great, That's or right. not so good, but if you hear the context, it helps. You oh. can bet, and this sounds like exactly the same thing. Like you, It's not just the context around all this data, but I like the idea of the attack path, where what you're thinking about is less of, I've got to go hunt and peck to yeah. find all these data points and correlate them exactly. and figure out, is that where they came in? Yeah. This can, these technologies can start to give you an idea of, these are likely ways that they are coming in, That's and right. the, path, the path that they are take, bad actors are taking to get into your environment, yeah. so you can start there. Exactly, and I completely agree with that, because if you think, even studies have shown that most modern attacks on cloud-native applications, about 
80% of them have at least three steps, right? So you just start with 70% of the time with a malware infection or some vulnerability in some piece of code, maybe open source, maybe your own code. At some point, about 80% of the time again, give or take, there's a privilege escalation where you're manipulating the logic of all these roles within your cloud provider and then somehow getting elevated privileges assigned to you because of that exploit of the vulnerability to begin with and then eventually you get to those crown jewel assets. But the vulnerability alone might not be that significant on its own. But then when you combine that with, oh, you got a potential loophole in an ability to escalate your privileges, and you've got a publicly exposed S3 bucket, the combination right. of those could be lethal. Like for example, um, last year Pegasus Airline was in the news. They lost like over 21 million files, including 1.6 million PII files. Everything you needed to fly their planes, their flight planes, their charts, everything because of an exposed uh, public S3 bucket, which was exactly this type of attack path analysis. And it's a lot of companies have this, over 70% according to some studies. It's, it's frightening. Yeah. I mean, it's frightening, but it's also really good that we're, we're talking about it. Because when we yeah. start talking about these things, we can actually do something about it. Exactly. And I remember in the keynote, uh, Liz had uh, brought up CNAP and the idea yes. of what that's, I don't, I, I hesitate to call it a suite, because it's not really a suite of products per se. It's a, it's a set of, concepts for how you're going to approach these. And That's Panoptica, right. I know, serves a purpose in this. Yeah. How, how, does, how does her announcement play into what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So with Panoptica, we've been looking at the software artifacts and the S-bombs, the software bill of materials and, and, and your uh, cloud native applications. We've been taking a, also a leading approach for a API security analysis, both internally developed APIs as well as third party APIs and which ones have vulnerabilities that you want to stay away from and which ones are safe to connect to, as well as even serverless functions and so forth. But one piece that we hadn't been very strong on is the cloud security posture management, which includes Kubernetes posture management. And then that's an area where, for instance, Lightspin shines and plus their attack path technology and their graph DB, all of this. And so when you bring that together, there was a points made about right now there's so many fragmented tools in this security space yeah. that you're just looking from one pane of glass to another. And to get that context we were just discussing, you really need one tool that's closely communicating with a related tool, right. et cetera, if not, fully integrated, and that's what we're bringing, a fully integrated cloud native application protection platform so that you can get these comprehensive end-to-end -end attack path analysis and then really harden your, your infrastructure very efficiently and very effectively. And I think, at least for me, I think a point to really drive home is that no platform like this or anybody else comes yeah. out with is going to solve every problem that you yeah. have. But as I was talking like with the Meraki folks earlier, yeah. Creating a platform enables third parties, like our ecosystem partners, our channel partners, and our customers to build the things on top of it that yeah. they need for their own specific use cases. That's because if we try to always guess what use cases are, we can only do that to a point. Because we know customers, and they have a variety of different things that they yeah. need to solve for, different cultures internally that approach things differently. So we need to be able to give them the tools to say, we're trying to make this as easy and simple as we can so that you can do what you need on yes. top of our things rather than us prescriptively telling you, here's how you're going to do it. Exactly, and that's why having everything API driven, having the power and flexibility of a graph DB that can also do all sorts of dynamic queries and correlations, it all drives to exactly the use cases you're saying, to make it completely flexible, ingestible, consumable in any ways that the customer needs to meet their specific use cases. Awesome, Tim, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the, sort the of opportunity. The, sort of the practical application yeah. of what we hear, in because what we hear in keynotes is awesome, and we love hearing it, yeah. and it's really nice to have a separate conversation about what does this practically mean for us when we're taking a look at the tech? Yeah, absolutely, and we have a lot of sessions that are now going to be going into that technical detail, so uh, happy to continue these conversations. Excellent, thanks for being here. Thank you, Jeff, thanks.